by Nature's Way. Distributed by H&J Enterprises Limited. A very good evening and welcome. You're watching the 7 o'clock news on CNC3. I'm Ria Rambley. I'm Ryan Bechu. I am Jassi Marik with Sport. And I'm Colleen Hussain with your weather. Making the news tonight. The Diabetes Association wants taxes on sugar-sweetened drinks and ultra-processed foods. The health minister responds. The UNC leader demands third parties contribute more while the NTA questions leaders' priority on pride over practicality. Judge rules that the ban on open pyre cremations for COVID-19 victims was unconstitutional. Ahead in sport, a brand new program is launched with the aim of shifting TNT's outlook and building a stronger culture around sport. Isolated afternoon showers bring some welcome rainfall. Could we see more of this as we head through this week into the weekend? I'll have those details in tonight's weather forecast. Eight months after they reunited, there appears to be a war of words between the United National Congress and the National Transformation Alliance. It all came to light last night when UNC political leader Kamala Prasad Bisesa warned political parties that she will only partner with them if they can bring something to the table. Speaking at a cottage meeting in Praesa last evening, Prasad Bisesa told supporters they are now in election mode and she again reiterated the party's willingness to partner with other political parties. However, she laid down some ground rules. Pasad Bisesa said she will not tolerate any disrespect towards her party members, particularly her young members. Furthermore, Pasad Bisesa said too often these so-called third parties only have a presence on social media and no real supporters. Last year, the party formed a coalition with the Gary Griffith-led National Transformation Alliance to fight the local government election. It cannot be that UNC supporters must be sheep must do almost everything. UNC must host events. UNC must provide you resources. UNC must bring the supporters, bring the sheep. And then these other organizations want to come and swing in and stand up on the platform and talk. Do you agree with me? You must carry your weight. Meanwhile, in a departure from the norm last evening, the UNC leader sought to defend both her political party and the People's National Movement from allegations of racism. The opposition leader said the mantra of up-and-coming political parties is to accuse both the UNC and the PNM of encouraging what she termed tribal voting along racial lines. She said neither her, her political party nor Keith Rowley's political party is inherently racist. There is a great amount of diversity in both our parties. There may be policies that are pursued by this government that we say geographically motivated, geographic discrimination and so on. So tell me when, Sandra, you go to vote, you're voting for the UNC because you're voting for race, you're voting for policies and you're voting for issues. NTA political leader Gary Griffith said Passat Bissess's comments were divisive and counterproductive. He says it is clear that lessons were not learned from the past and the same pattern of arrogance and exclusion are resurfacing, describing it as crab and barrel syndrome. Griffith added that while he is willing to cooperate with political parties, including that of the UNC, he will not be used as a pawn in a political game only to be discarded when, when convenient, noting that the UNC has only been able to beat the PNM as a coalition. Now to this developing story. The Diabetes Association is calling for a sugar tax on beverages and ultra-processed foods. The association says such taxes could discourage the consumption of unhealthy food and drinks. The call comes one day after Health Minister Terence Dial Singh called out fast food establishments for their roles in fostering unhealthy eating habits, which is posing a burden to the public health care system. Chester Sambrano brings us this report, including what the minister is saying about the suggestion for such taxes. On the heels of the health minister's public condemnation of fast food restaurants and soft drink producers comes a call from the Diabetes Association for taxes to be implemented. In a statement, the DATT says, drawing on strategies discussed at the Healthy Caribbean Coalition in July 2023, it is advocating for a comprehensive approach to removing ultra-processed products from schools and communities. Among the three recommendations are taxes on sugar-sweetened beverages mm -hmm. and ultra-processed foods, as well as bans on targeted advertising. However, 
The idea has been shut down by Health Minister Terence Dialsing, who tells CNC3 News that no taxes in this regard are being considered. The Diabetes Association also reveals the results of a junk food survey it conducted last year where almost 1,000 young people were interviewed. It notes that a staggering 88.4% admitted to eating fast food at least once a week, and more than one-third of these respondents reported consuming fast food more than three times per week. It also breaks down the fast food preferences, with KFC leading with 88% and doubles 10% behind. The survey also highlights that only 23% of respondents met the target for vegetable intake and a mere 13% for fruit. It says, furthermore, about half of the participants failed to include a fruit or vegetable in their diet on more than one day of the week. And it is with this information in mind, Simon Hardy, the CEO of Prestige Holdings, the parent company of KFC, says it is really people's choice to make what they eat, especially when it comes to fast food. He also says the Minister of Health has been meeting with the owners of fast food chains. Rest assured that, you know, we use quality local ingredients wherever possible in our meals and people have a choice. Hardy assures that they are working and looking at various options, which the minister is fully aware of. But he can't comment specifically on the timing and exactly what will be coming out and when. Chester Sambrano, CNC3 News. And while the health minister says certain fast food chains are partially responsible for the prevalence of diabetes and hypertension plaguing this country, there are mixed views on whether these companies should pay a higher tax. Here's what some of you had to say. There are to pay more tax election coming, there are to finance the, the, the election. Once the, once the, the, the food outlet make it money, they should pay a tax, a more higher tax. Not a higher tax, but a tax that they could afford to pay. But if they're making money, they, they can't pay anything. No, I don't think so. Because the poor people will can't purchase when the tax is too high on it. Right? Also, KFC right now, the tax is too high. It's $52, so three pieces of chicken and a portion of fry with a drink. That is very hard for the poor people. Yes, it should, because they're not really promoting to good health. I mean, it is a decision by the person who purchases in, but at the same time, they know that it's not healthy. They know that for a fact, but yet still, you know, they're continuing in that. Yeah, they should, because at the end of the day, everybody who feel in the effects of the fast food outlets after, it's not turning out properly. Not turning out good. Yeah, they should. Right. Now, these make a lot of money here in our country. They do, right? And they always raise their prices, right? And uh, trust and believe, although they, they are raising the prices, people always run down these fast food outlets and they make a lot of money. So, yeah. <laughs> Almost 400,000 gallons of oil and polluted water have been removed as part of the Tobago oil spill cleanup thus far. The oil from an overturned barge is being extracted from the ocean and shorelines and put into frack tanks, which are used to store petroleum products. CNC3 News has confirmed that there are 20 of the tanks on the island, with several more expected within this week. Considering the volume of oil still out at sea and deposits on the shoreline and on rocks, Director of the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, Alan Stewart, said the team is prepared to use a barge if capacity on land runs out. Yeah. So they all at least 20,000 gallons, each of them. Um, and as I said, the THA has made arrangements for the dig um, cells up, up at the Stolly Park area where special cells are being prepared to deal with the overspill in terms of the overloads. 17 tanks are said to be already filled. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Energy and Energy Industries confirms that the initial investigative hydrographic survey of the wreck area off the coast of Cove Tobago has been completed. It will allow for a response team to begin the deployment of the NOFI current buster technology, which is part of the high-speed oil containment system. 
At the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, a ban on open-air cremation sparked debate as many felt it was discriminatory against the Hindu community. Now, High Court Judge Averson Quinlan Williams has ruled that it was in fact unconstitutional. The judge first ruled on the case last July, but she only revealed the reasons for her decision today. During the hearing, there was evidence from international medical experts debunking the notion that cremations could increase the spread of the disease. Well, the judge ruled that the policy, which was defended by Chief Medical Officer Dr. Roshan Parasram, did not strike a balance between the rights of the individual and the interests of the community. The lawsuit was brought by Cindy Ann Ramsarup Basad, whose father died of COVID-19 back in June 2021. She filed the case after her family was initially granted permission to have a funeral at the Waterloo cremation site before the police reversed the decision based on the policy. We're still to come in the news. Concerns over increased violence at schools as contracts for over two dozen safety officers expire. Accused of running the CPO's office like a military camp, former commander Dr. Darrell Dindial says that's not true. Cars, sports, careers, food. Women always talk about these things, but not about our health. Did you know that testosterone is responsible for muscle mass, strength, deep voice, healthy hair growth, and a sex drive? With low testosterone, we may not achieve our potential. The good news is that Jameson Power for Men is an excellent testosterone support. Take Jameson Power for Men and perform to your max. Jameson, here for your health. You've set big goals for your future, and we can help you to achieve them. Getting that degree you've always wanted, buying your first car, making it official on a truly special day, or building a home that's your own. Big or small, share your ambitions with us, and we can help make them real. Nourishing the nation, Linda's is the first name in bread. Looks like Johnny's ex-girlfriend finally found my car. Eh, uh, you've got CG United, you're fine. I'll never forget the year those monkeys stole my car. They drove it over a cliff, burned the seats, and called the words pineapple banana smoothie into all the doors. And that was after they used it for the bank house. I don't blame them, it's their favorite smoothie. And I refuse to share the recipe. Best comprehensive cover for the price. CG United. Good like that. I'm here with John Walsh. You guys may know him from America's most wanted. So, John, tell me, how has the addition of Omega XL to your daily routine affected your overall lifestyle? Incredibly. I was very skeptical. I catch bad guys for a living. I've had two fractured skulls, two broken jaws, eight concussions, eight broken noses. So I'm always searching for something to mediate that pain. If you're living with joint or muscle pain caused by inflammation, try Omega XL and see the difference it can make in your life. We're gonna do this together. Recession have you down? Don't lose hope. Head on down to Tire Clinic for the recession deals. That should big savings with our road hazard warranty on download to me to one Falcon Tires. Available at Tire Clinic, Cuba, Shigonas, and Pleasance Park. Tire Clinic, a tire for every need. Call 636-8973 or 636-2958. Welcome back. Some secondary schools may be at risk of further indiscipline and violent behavior as the contracts for over two dozen safety officers have now expired. These officers perform key functions relating to maintaining order at government schools and Tutor has described them as a vital component in the ed education system. Akash Stamaru explains what their absence could mean for students and teachers at these institutions. A school safety officer performs an integral role in maintaining order and discipline at secondary schools. Deployed at government institutions, their duties range from intervening during fights, responding to emergencies, preventing theft, monitoring student behavior and indiscipline, 
as well as identifying threats on the school compound. Being the first responders to acts of indiscipline, they are said to be the buffer between the offending student and police involvement. These officers also oversee bag searches, and CNC3 News was told if a school safety officer is not present in some cases, then it's not done, as even the contracted security guards will not do it without them. Put simply by a school safety officer who spoke with us anonymously, without them, all the school rules fall down, and some children believe they have free reign to do what they want. But despite their importance, at least 30 of them are questioning why their contracts were not renewed by the Education Ministry after February 2nd. The absence is of concern to teachers as well, with Tutor telling CNC3 News that they are a vital link in the arsenal of security, and with the rise of school violence and indiscipline in some schools, it is necessary to have the full complements available. Tutor President Martin Lumpkin said they raised this issue with the Education Ministry last year and was assured that contracts will be renewed. Now he believes it may be time to revisit the issue. But this may be a temporary setback as Minister Dr. Nan Gadsby Dolly told CNC3 News that contracts are being renewed currently. However, she said while safety officers do play an important role in mitigating school violence, a number of incidents are happening outside of the school compound. It's why she said they have asked the community police and the TTPS to increase patrols at the end of the school day. Akash Samaru, CNC3 News. All right, thank you very much, Akash. Now, police are promising to impose additional measures to fight gang violence near schools in East Port of Spain. While a proposed plan will be forwarded to Police Commissioner Ulla here with Christopher for her approval, this was the outcome of a meeting today between senior officers from the Port of Spain Division and principals from over 20 primary schools in the East Port of Spain area. The meeting was held in response to the recent increase in gang violence around schools in the area, including the murder of 11-year-old Isakel Paria, who was killed by a stray bullet last week. Senior Superintendent Harry Passad Ramnarine told the school officials that some of these measures would be implemented from today. He also agreed to continue collaborating and a follow-up meeting with more stakeholders to develop solutions in the coming weeks. What was supposed to be a routine day's work turned into horror after two gunmen chased and killed 32-year-old Keith Branca in Rosilac. Branca, a worker with the Separia Regional Corporation, was at the job site with his colleagues at Silver Stream Road in Ariparo Village constructing a drain sometime after 8 a.m. Workers told police they saw two masked gunmen dressed in police uniform approaching them. CNC3 News was told when the men opened fire at Branca, everyone scampered for safety. The assailants only pursued Branca, who was shot behind a house that is under construction. No, no, nobody didn't run it because it was looking like a terrorist. Huh? But it's when they fired the shot, that's when we realized, wait, nah, it's gone, man. So my boy just ducked down and started running that way. But he looked like he was going away. Eh? He had to run at least two, three times around the house, inside of the house. Man was just running the man down until he ran a certain way and he said, why dog, why do all that, why dog, why? And with that day, the last two shots, one to the, one to the legs and one to the head. Branca, a father of five, had previous run-ins with the law and was on bail for firearm-related offences. His relatives say he changed his life about a year ago. He was baptised and was mentoring young people. His co-worker, Atiba Peters, says Branca was just trying to make an honest dollar and he is now calling for security at job sites. The Communication Workers Union is once again calling for the immediate removal of senior managers at TSCT. Dozens of active and retired workers held a protest outside the company's headquarters in Port of Spain today, citing corruption at the organization's helm. CWU's General Secretary Joanne Ogier says workers are disgruntled over management's handling of the company's integrity. Just last week, former CEO Lisa Agard revealed to a JSC that she was muzzled from communicating with the public in October after a massive cyber attack which saw customers' data leaked on the dark web. Who is guarding the guards? No one. And that is what is going on in TSCT. No new business, no vision, no mission. What is going on? Get rid of these inept and miscreants from TSTT. If you could pay yourself bonuses, if you could allegedly spend $8 million in Carnival and give your employees a bowl of corn soup, we say no to that. We want our retroactive salaries. We would not wait another five-year period. 
Well, Ogier says today's action is only the beginning, as the union is also putting pressure on the government, who it blames for a lost audit report completed since February 2022. And she condemns both Finance Minister Com Imbert and Public Utilities Minister Marvin Gonzalez for ignoring the workers' concerns. But Gonzalez was not too concerned about the protest when CNC3 News questioned him today. These things, we can't be too concerned about it. The unions, if they believe that protesting and, and demonstrating in that way is going to be you know, a powerful avenue to air their, their, their concerns and, to, and their grouses, then they're free to do that. As a government, we have to continue to do our work and to work with the, all of our stakeholders to improve the lives of people. So I'm not, there's nothing to be concerned about. The union is also calling for management to pay retroactive salaries owed to workers and retirees. Efforts to contact Minister Imbert and TSCT's executives have been unsuccessful. Chief Personal Officer Dr. Daryl Dindial is dismissing workers' claims that he runs his department like a military camp. The former commander in the Trinidad Coast Guard is being accused by staff at his office of installing cameras to spy on them, restricting them to their respective floors, and victimizing workers who complained. The workers sent letters to the Public Service Association complaining that the work environment is toxic and harmful to their mental health. They claim that they are being tortured and harassed. In an email response to CNC3 News, Dr. Dindial describes their concerns as unfortunate and unfounded. He says the cameras and other measures taken were done with safety of the workers in mind as there were instances of staff being threatened. In fact, he says the union even complimented him on his office for implementing those policies. PSA President Watson, PSA President Leroy Batiste says the union will be treating with the complaints with full force. In tonight's Business Watch, in case you felt like you paid more for KFC in the past week, you did, as the company confirms price increases have taken effect. Meanwhile, Shell strongly believes the market for LNG is set to grow over the next 15 years. Peter Christopher tells us more. Popular fast food chain KFC has joined the list of several businesses that have raised their prices in the past two months. Prestige Holdings Chief Executive Officer Simon Hardy has confirmed that several items on the fast food chain's menu increased by an average between 3% and 5%. Hardy says the increase in minimum wage as well as other increased costs gave the company little choice but to adjust its prices. The main jump for us was the minimum wage. We employ 3,300 people. And, you know, minimum wage went up by, uh, by a significant amount, as we all know. So this is to be considered, A, we held off in KFC on making any changes in this year since 20, till February 22nd, wherever it went live. So we waited till after Carnival. In January, Rituals, Royal Castle and Blue Waters all increased their prices, citing similar concerns about increased costs. Hardy's confirmation of the price increase came one day after KFC's parent group, Prestige Holdings, announced historic profits. However, he explains that the restaurant chain's profits aren't as large as most would think. Everyone thinks that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, profit being made. We are high, we are high sales business, but low margin business. Only 4.2% of our sales is profit. Hardy stresses that despite online rumors, this was the first price increase by the restaurant chain this year. Shell believes that global demand for liquefied natural gas is estimated to rise by more than 50% by 2040, according to Shell's LNG Outlook 2024. The company notes as industrial coal to gas switching garden space in China, South Asian and Southeast Asian countries, these countries will use more LNG to support their economic growth. The report notes that global trade in LNG reached 404 million tons in 2023, up from 397 million tons in 2022, with tight supplies of LNG constraining growth while maintaining prices and price volatility above historic averages. The report notes demand for natural gas is expected to reach around 625 to 685 million tons a year in 2040, according to the latest industry estimates. Shell currently owns a 45% stake in Atlantic LNG, having finalized a restructuring deal alongside BP and the Trinidad and Tobago government last December. Peter Christopher, CNC3 Business Watch. 
All right, let's hand you over now to Kalein Hussein to see what's coming up in the weather. Trinidad and Tobago had another mostly hot and sunny day. The Saharan dust concentrations are on the decline, and we are seeing these pop-up isolated afternoon showers favoring western and hilly parts of both Trinidad and Tobago during the afternoon hours, typical when we have light winds and lots of daytime heating. We also have quite a bit of low-level cloud patches moving towards the Lesser Antilles. This could bring some cloudy periods and isolated shower activity overnight tonight through tomorrow. I'll have the details on what else we can expect just after the break. A high premium on quality, prices and service. The main attributes of Southern Food Basket Marketplace Point Fortin. A universe of variety with something for every shopper. Come to where the deals are bigger and better. Where you shop in comfort. Southern Food Basket Marketplace. Now serving with pride. Point Fortin and environs. This is how it's gonna go They better look out below This is your show Everybody's gonna know That's how it's gonna go They better look out below Cause this is your show Do you need tires? My name is Dale Ali from Anand Low Price Industrial Tires. We are located at South Haven Mall in DB. Feel free to visit our showroom. We here at Anand Low Price Industrial Tires are proud to bring Step Rising, Grimax, and Duran to the Caribbean market. Step Rising and Grimax are our truck line of tires. Duran, our luxury sedans and SUV. All our tires have ISO, Sonicap, SIN, and Euro Highway certification. Come on down to Anand Low Price Industrial Tires at South Haven Mall in DB, where we carry a large stock and a wide variety of all the different sizes. Feel free to contact us at 292-0434 or 366-4783. Missing 32-year-old Akisha Worrell is tonight asking the nation to pray for his daughter's safe return. It's been 11 days since the Pity Valley mother left home and disappeared. Relatives say police are working on a lead, but as days go by, the pain and worry intensifies. Here's more from Timothy Shasto and Carissa Lee. Hi, this is Akisha. Sorry, can I come to the phone right now? Call me back later. Bye. Since February 17th, this is the only way relatives have been able to hear Akisha Worrell's voice. The 32-year-old mother of two left her Pity Valley home on Saturday and did not return home that night. When I saw the text, I was like, after nine, I saw the text, I was like, the mommy missing, mommy not come home, I said, okay. When I called my sister, she said, yeah, Akisha ain't come home yet. When the night turned into day, Akisha's relatives wasted no time in making a police report to the West End Police Station. But it's been 11 days since. And according to her big sister, it's not like Akisha to leave her children alone. Investigating it and they think they have a, a hunch to find the drug in the foot. And I would like, that. I like to tell them, please, don't drag your foot. Please hasty up the investigation. And that's because her loved ones, especially her 11 and 8 year old children, are grieving. My nephew, he is a mama's boy. He's not really eating much, and he was done picking in the first place. My niece, she touched herself, but you're seeing the grief on her face. She don't know how to express herself, but you're seeing the grief on her face. Her father, Frankie Worrell, who recently had surgery, told the CNC3 News he blanked out all negative thoughts and is instead pleading with the population. I'm appealing from to the Prime Minister, the Minister, everybody. I would like your prayers. At this point in time, I would like the nation press. All Mandir, Baptist Church, Catholic Church, 
We would like you to join us in prayers for this lady, please. The police is asking anyone with information to call the West End Police Station at 637-4226 or 800-TIPS. Carissa Lee, CNC3 News. Welcome back, Colleen. You promised a hot day and we had some wood. Yeah, we also got some isolated afternoon showers, bringing that much needed heat relief. We'll see more of that as the week goes on, even into the weekend. But everyone's still talking about all the Saharan dust in the air, with our air quality in Beetham and Port of Spain getting down to hazardous levels. Meanwhile, the rest of the country moderate. So what's that about? So let's go take a look at what's going on across the Atlantic and what's going on with our Saharan dust levels. Well, no major surges moving towards Trinidad and Tobago anytime soon. We do have a new surge moving off the African coast, not forecast to get here anytime soon and until then our air quality levels will continue to improve as dust levels near the country remains at mild to moderate levels now today we did see across the entire country air quality levels at moderate but this one station in Beetham got down to hazardous now what was going on there well localized air quality can be affected by bush fires blowing dust smoke and that's exactly what we had in Beetham we had a bush fire that was occurring in sea lots the smoke smoke blowing towards that air quality monitoring station in Beetham and that would have triggered that hazardous alert to be issued from that particular monitoring site. But as we continue through the next couple of days, moderate air quality is forecast across the country as we still have that a mild to moderate concentration of Saharan dust present. But weather-wise, we do have lots of low-level cloud patches near the Lesser Antilles. That's bringing quite a bit of showers, mainly north of Grenada towards central Lesser Antilles for us in Trinidad and Tobago. Just a few spotty showers to our east that could impact eastern parts of Tobago and Trinidad. Trinidad overnight tonight towards tomorrow, interrupting generally settled conditions with minimum low temperatures tonight between 22 and 24 degrees across the country. For tomorrow, temperatures getting up to around 32 degrees as our maximum high, but it could get warmer across western parts of Trinidad. And during the late morning through afternoon period, that's when we could see some passing cloudy periods and some isolated pop-up showers favoring those same areas, western and hilly parts of the country. Then we will get mostly sunny conditions by the evening time. And for all marine interests, no advisories in effect still. Waves in open waters up to two meters, so that's moderate, while in sheltered areas, waves are still near one meter. When you are heading to the beach, just exercise caution and follow the advice of lifeguards. And for the next several days, like I mentioned, we will be seeing some spotty showers, especially during that late morning through afternoon period. The highest chance is possible on Thursday, as we have an upper level trough that could enhance those isolated showers, leading to brief heavy rainfall across the country. So rainfall is good, looking forward to it to quell some of those bushfires that have been really impacting our air quality over the last several days. As well as the heat that's emanating from the earth, I saw some showers today and people were just calmly walking through the rain because I know they missed it. They well. missed it. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, thank you so much, Colleen. Let's take a break. Stay with us right here on CNC3. Available at Ferrero Optical. Did the holiday spending put a dent in your cash? Well, hear what? Top up your pocket in the Cash Splash promotion. Win over $200,000, including over 65000 in our weekly draws. Well, hear what to do. Grab any cool, cool, turbo energy drink, fruta, cool kids, Viva, or Oasis water. Then visit Facebook or Instagram at Cold Cold Caribbean or Fruta Fruit Juice Official for more details. Let's top up your pocket with the Cash Splash promotion. Period nights don't have to look like this. Move less, wake up to change. So change for a real night's sleep with Always Overnight. Its three times protection system absorbs, locks the fluid, and keeps it away from your skin. For protected nights without leaks. Always. Are you feeling unwell? 
Did your doctor misdiagnose you? If so, a PET scan is what you need. Unlike all other scans, a PET scan detects 90% of cancers, especially where CT and MRI fail to do so and fool you and your doctor. If you have to ask, do I have cancer? A PET scan is your best option. When it comes to cancer, a PET scan gives the answer. Call us for a free consultation. Heart Excel is an omega-7 supplement formulated with a proprietary purified omega-7 named palmitolic acid. Great for supporting healthy cholesterols and inflammation levels. This omega-7 supplement encourages healthy blood sugar. It can help with weight management and even skin health. Heart Excel, get yours today. See the Wallen Style this carnival. Get two complete pairs of single vision glasses for $5.95. Get a free pair of polarized sunglasses with the purchase of progressive transitions with designer frames for $16.99. Or complete bifocals with transitions for $13.99. See View Optical, affordable eye care for everyone. Back to living with our fast-acting syrup for relief. Faithful from day one, this bread can't do no wrong. Real and homemade, just like the old days. It's genuine, it's sure. This bread you must adore. It's a slice of love in so many ways. Over 65 years of experience nourishing the nation, Linda's is the first name in bread. Well, imagine controlling different things simply using your thoughts. Wow, well, hard to imagine, but as, as of last week, it appears to be possible. This after a human patient fully recovered after a chip was implanted in their brain. We'll tell you what that patient has been able to do with his mind in tonight's Tech Tip. Rediscover Flow at discoverflow.co. Flow, inspired by you. Tech mogul Elon Musk often makes news, and this time it appears he's also made history. His brain tech company Neuralink has reported that after a successful experimental surgery, the patient who volunteered to be a participant is said to be able to control a computer mouse using just their thoughts. Musk made the announcement on social media last week that ultimately went viral. We're trying to get as many um, button presses as possible from thinking. So that's what we're currently working on is, you know, can you get left mouse, right mouse, like mouse down, mouse up. Now, according to Neuralink, the goal of the project is to give persons unable to physically use smart devices the ability to communicate. For example, it should allow paralyzed people to control computers and smartphones. Now, Musk admitted that even he hopes the chip could one day treat conditions such as autism, obesity, depression, and schizophrenia. So we asked some of you if you could see yourself signing up for a brain implant anytime soon. Yeah, I yeah. Then, you, then you need that. I think it has something to do like the mark of the business or something like that. So I don't want to bother. I don't know if people have might think about it. I myself could not even think about it. This raises some concerns ethically, um, but I would say it's a big step for technology. No matter your view, it seems that technology continues to advance and will wait on no one. Kishan Haynes, CNC3 News. Rediscover Flow at discoverflow.co. Flow, inspired by you. Would you do it, Ryan? I think I would. I think I'd take a chance. Okay. I wonder if Jassy would. I just might. Who knows? I know someone who will not trade their God-given ability for that sort of technology. Khalifa McCollin, she got a hot hand in the All Sectors Netball League to keep UTT perfect. And there's a new record holder in men's international T20 cricket. The crowd. Sport is next. Cash back craziness! 
Yes, it's insane, but we're giving away a total of $300,000. Sign up or upgrade to our everything plans for an instant reward of $250 cash back on your bill. Or pay your bill on time for a chance to win. Get in on the cash back craziness. Visit discoverflow.co today. Flow, inspired by you. Introducing Advances Energy Vitamins. Advances Energy Vitamins is designed to give you the extra push you need to power through your day. It's not just any multivitamin. Packed with more than 20 vitamins and minerals with added ginseng and reinforced prebiotics. A unique synergistic formula that you will find nowhere else. To help you experience more sustained energy, feel more alive and alert to keep you going strong all day long. See the difference now with Advances Energy Vitamins. Available at leading pharmacies and Pennywise nationwide. Make your mark with the Nibosh International General Certificate from Oshis Limited. This Nibosh program is informative and the instructors are top notch. I received a distinction. It landed me the job I love. This Nibosh program helped me advance my career. Enroll now. Oshis Limited. Accredited. Approved. Accepted. This is amazing. But it wouldn't be nothing. Nothing. Without a woman or a girl. Ladies of TNT on International Women's Day. Friday, 8th March. The network of NGOs for the advancement of women. Under the patronage of Senator the Honorable Donna Cox. Is proud to invite you to Woman Power. of excellence and elegance in celebration of International Women's Day. Friday, 8th March at the luxurious Napa Auditorium. Come and enjoy talented and powerful women such as Nadia Batson, Carol Addison, Nisha B, Nyla Blackman, Viz Javier String, and Vaughn and Bigfoot. This girl is on fire! Special guest, Nival Chitla. And your host for the evening, the 1998 Miss Universe, Wendy Fitzwilliams. Showtime, 7 p.m. Special reserve, 300. General admission, 250. And hear this one. A second batch of early bird tickets, if bought by this Saturday, March 2nd, cost $25 less if they last. For more info, call 678-7549 or 491-1802. Woman Power. Cold or flu? Take Panadol Multi-Symptoms. Relief in minutes. Seven golden flu symptoms. Panadol release starts here. Introducing Pentax Water Pumps. With state-of-the-art Italian engineering and over 34 years of manufacturing experience, Pentax Pumps are the epitome of quality and reliability. Rest easy with our new and improved three-year warranty and after-sale support, ensuring your satisfaction. Choose Pentax Pumps for unrivaled reputation and outstanding performance. Where there's water, there's Pentax. Plumbing problems? Don't guess. Call Plumbing Solutions at 6284646. Proud to be serving Trinidad and Tobago for over 20 years. We do it all. Maintenance and repairs, new construction, sewer lines, inspection, drain cleaning, leak detection. We are licensed and insured. So call Plumbing Solutions at 6284646. Tell me about Turmeric XL. Turmeric XL, that's a new product, and I'm actually very excited about it. You have to get a lot of it to actually meet the studies. Our researchers and doctors that we have at Great Health Works for Turmeric XL, we have data on that specific dose 
and it's far more bioavailable, meaning absorbable and utilized within the body. It's that much better than the expensive stuff. So you really have an amazing form of turmeric there. Turmeric XL, get yours today. Cancer, whether you have it or your doctors are looking for it, only a PET scan can give the critical details. First world countries now use PET scans instead of CT scans. Get the right scan, get a PET scan. Call us for a free consultation. Welcome back. The I Choose Sport campaign will focus on making sport a priority in Trinidad and Tobago. Launched yesterday at the Hyatt Regency Hotel, the program seeks greater involvement in athletic en endeavor as a means of addressing society's issues. Kasten Cupid was in attendance and files this report. The Ministry of Sport, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and the sport company, are all putting their hands on deck to build the required momentum needed to fix the ills in the sporting structure in TNT. According to organizers, a deliberate effort must be made to change the culture, especially in the face of a notable breakdown of discipline and civility in the school system. In that light, I Choose Sport was birthed to get into schools, communities, households and minds to change common misconceptions about sport, its benefits, importance and its relationship with academics. It's about making sport fundamental, a fundamental part. It's a fundamental part of the holistic education. It's not a luxury. It should be compulsory. And it shouldn't be voluntary. It should be mandatory. A number of our sporting greats received the instruments of appointment as program ambassadors in the various disciplines and will mentor, encourage and, and educate participants. The program will provide numerous opportunities and tools to fix a variety of pervasive issues from a grassroots level. Minister of Sport and Community Development Shamfa Kojo Lewis acknowledged that a lot of work had to be done to repair our society. But she cautioned that the journey of a thousand miles starts with a critical first step. And that is what yesterday's launch signified on the road to change the culture within the education system. We don't squeeze in maths. We don't squeeze in English. We don't squeeze in science. Why are we even talking about squeezing in physical education and sport? We have to set up the system in such a way to help the schools that are willing to work right now, and hopefully all the other schools will come on board. So we established this I Choose Sport program on the Sport ET so that schools and community entities who wish to access this type of service and support can do so freely. Kasten Cupid, CNC3 Sport. All right, now time for an update from the Hazel Crawford Stadium, where Trinidad and Tobago's under-20 Soka Warriors are currently taking on Canada in a Group D deciding match in the CONCACAF under-20 qualifiers. The score currently stands at 1-0 in favor of Canada. Miles Morgan got that first goal in the 10th minute, approaching half time. Remember, both Trinidad and Tobago and Canada make, or, or rather, came into this clash perfect with two wins each from two games played. And they are playing for one spot in the main draw of the CONCACAF Under-20 Championships. We'll have a full score and highlights in tomorrow night's sportscast. Senior Soko Warriors head coach Angus Eve has submitted his 60-man preliminary roster for next month's Conmebol Copa America playing against Canada. The list contains most of Eve's recent regulars with no key omissions. However, there are some interesting inclusions, such as former Manchester United Youth Academy player Darren McIntosh Buffonge and 20-year-old Grimsby Town forward Justin Obiku. The MLS Super Drafts first and second picks overall, Tyrese Spicer and Wayne Frederick, are also in their, uh, in line rather for their maiden call-ups. TNT will face Canada in the Copa America Plain on March 23rd at Toyota Stadium in Frisco, Texas. Presentation College Shaguan has got one step closer to the secondary school's cricket league title with a 140-run win over Hillview College today. Meanwhile, Fatima College slipped in the standings with a loss to Naparima. Fatima College batted first and scored 216 at their Mokrapa Road home. Isaiah Fernandez was their best batsman on the day with 53, while Zakari Siwa continued his form of the season with a knock of 47. Matthew Cooper was Knapp's best bowler with 2 for 36 and Roberto Badri took 2 for 39. 
In reply, Naparima College went on to record their fourth win of the season when they got to 220 for six in 46 overs to leapfrog Fatima in the standings. Presentation College Chaguanas got one step closer to winning the title when they scored a comprehensive 140 run win over second placed Vishnu boys, who are now third after the loss. Perez batted first and scored 225 in 49 overs. Justin Jagasa scored 121. Anil Rupalal took 3 for 4 and Alexander Chase took 2 for 10 as Vishnu boys were bowled out for 85 in 28 overs as Perez Shagwanas remain unbeaten. St. Benedict's College scored a 5-wicket win over St. Mary's College to hand the CIC their fourth straight loss after the three wins to start the season. And finally, Andre Suglal and Joseph Mendoza scored centuries to lead Hillview College to a 152-run win over Prince's Town. Ian Wayson, CNC3 Sport. Well, for the next 10 weeks, students from Boise RC, Maraval, Parman and La Saifa Primary Schools will receive cricket coaching through the Rotary Club of Maraval. According to the coordinator of the clinic, Devendra Maharaj, each day the players will learn specific areas under the guidance of Queen's Park player Eric Garcia and Jaron Ned from Cane Farm Cricket Club. Each session will also have a reminder of what was learned uh, throughout the program. And then at the end of the entire session, there's going to be a quadrangular series between the, the schools. Maharaj says the aim is to put on the clinic annually with more schools coming on board across the country as it progresses. Perennial champions UTT continue to boss the Premiership Division of the Court's All Sectors Netball League. The Scholars have maintained a perfect record so far in the season, with their latest win coming against MIC. In the Championship Division, Jablote outshot Bermudez. Jablote came into this one ranked second in the Premiership Division to take on Bermudez ranked eighth. The Queens of San Juan Jablote found their opponents to be quite miserable and led by Jocelyn Marcel, who eventually hit 16 out of 28 attempts, Bermuda shot out to a 10-5 lead at the end of the first quarter. But in the second quarter is where Jablote finally came to life and they led 19-17 by half-time, leaning on the accuracy of their own goal shoot, Latoya Thomas, in that period and the third. Thomas dropped 28 goals from 42 attempts and Giselle Hobson hit 13 from 23 as Jablote went on to win this one in the end, 41 to 30. In the Premiership Division, the top two clashed UTT in red, taking on MIC in grey. Both teams pushed each other all the way in that first period. At the end of it, however, MIC held a narrow advantage over the table toppers UTT 14 to 13, game on for the second period. UTT had to respond, and through the composure and leadership of Khalifa McCollin Lopez, who hit 54 out of 57 attempts from the goal attack position, UTT turned things around to lead 32 to 20 at the end of the second period and 49 28 at the end of the third. Together with Shania Morgan's 10 goals from 14 attempts, the Scholars went on to close out a 64-37 win over MIC to stay at the top of the All Sectors Premiership Division. Jan Lofty Eaton breaks records for the fastest men's T20 international century and Mexico tops Group A of the CONCACAF Women's Gold Cup. It's in tonight's international roundup. In cricket, Namibian batter Jan Lofty Eaton broke the record for the fastest men's T20 international century in the first match of the Nepal Tri Nation T20I series against the host team. The 20 year old achieved his 100 runs in just 33 balls, smashing 11 fours and 8 sixes. The record previously belonged to Nepal's Kushal Mala, who scored his 100 of 34 deliveries versus Mongolia last year. As a sweetener, Lofty Eaton also ended with bowling figures of 2 for 29. In tennis, Italian Matteo Arnaldi advanced to the second round of the Mexican Open following his win over American Taylor Fritz. Arnaldi won 6-4, 4-6, 6-3 against the number four seed. The Italian will now face American Ben Shelton in the next round. And in football, Mexico tops Group A after securing a 2-0 win over the United States, the CONCACAF Women's Gold Cup. Mexico got the lead in the 30th minute from Jacqueline Ovalle, then doubled their advantage through substitute Myra Pelayo, who secured the win with the second in the 92nd minute. Both goals from Ovalle and Pelayo ended Mexico's 16-match losing streak to the Americans. Jovan Ravello, CNC3 Sport. 
UK golassos in that game there. Now for our sport high, we head to England, where a Manchester City player was in the mood against Luton in the FA Cup. It's said that Erling Haaland is a goal-scoring machine. And he really showed it today, scoring not once, not twice. You know what? He had a hat-trick by the halftime interval. And he ended the match with a whopping five goals. So the Norwegian goal machine for your performance today, you earn tonight's CSE 3 Sports Eye. Thank you so much, Jesse. A big game happening tonight. What's the score? Yeah, it's still 1 0 in favor of Canada, and they are heading into halftime. All right, thank you so much. Let's take a break. Stay with us right here on CNC3. Colgate Total gives you a superior antibacterial protection for whole mouth health and helps stop problems before they start. So your dentist ready. Mr. Walker. Oh, am I early? Be dentist ready with Colgate Total. Faithful from day one, this bread can do no wrong. Real and homemade, just like the old days. It's genuine, it's sure. This bread you must adore. It's a slice of love in so many ways. Linda, Linda. Faithful from day Linda, one. Linda. Faithful from day Linda, one. Linda. Faithful from day Linda, one. Linda. Faithful from day one. With over 65 years of experience nourishing the nation. Linda's is the first name in bread. Did the holiday spending put a dent in your cash? Well, hear what? Top up your pocket in the Cash Splash promotion. Win over $200,000, including over 65000 in our weekly draws. Well, hear what to do. Grab any cool, cool, turbo energy drink, fruta, cool kids, viva, or oasis water. Then visit Facebook or Instagram at Cold Cold Caribbean or Fruta Fruit Juice Official for more details. Let's top up your pocket with the Cash Splash promotion. Reboot Sport Drink. Revive, rehydrate, recover. Alka Seltzer Boost presents. <sighs> to Alka Boost later, say goodbye to the hangover and hello to life with Alka Seltzer Boost. Public Utilities Minister Marvin Gonzalez praised TNTech workers for answering a distress call to save a cat named Prince stranded at the top of a 50-foot coconut tree. Prince had been stranded for over 24 hours as members of the Hunter Search and Rescue team, as well as the TTPS, helped with the rescue. The story attracted thousands of comments and shares on social media, with many expressing relief over Prince's rescue, including Minister Gonzalez. I'm proud of um, TN Tech and what they have done in saving um, the life um, of this pet. And it shows that in Trinidad and Tobago, we do have a concern for pets. And we have to all do our part to ensure that they are protected and that we all care about you know, the lives, not only of human beings, but the lives of our animals and our pets. The seven-month-old kitten was rescued just around 6 p.m. yesterday. It's time to recap our headlines as we leave you. UNC leader demands third parties contribute more, while NTA questions leaders' priority on pride over practicality. Judge Rose said the ban on open pie cremations for COVID-19 victims was unconstitutional. The Ministry of Sport, Education and the Sport Company aim for a shift in culture through the I Choose Sport program. Mostly hot and sunny conditions, but watch out for those afternoon showers. 
As we leave you, let's remind you to stay connected with us on our social media platforms. There you'll find tonight's stories, the latest updates and exclusive content. And don't forget to pick up a copy of your TNT Guardian newspaper. We've come to the end of the 7 p.m. news here on CNC3. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Maria Rambley. I'm Ryan Bechu. I am Jassy Marie. And I'm Colleen Hussain. Have a good night.